Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm going to start doing a bit of painting now on the speeder bike. I was itching to get some paint down on it and work out what paints we use and that sort of thing. Lee Ralph used um, 1975 Earth from Archive X on his welding droid and it looked perfect. Um, after speaking to Guy and Lee about that colour choice, they seem to think it was used on the speed bike as well. So that will be my main base colour. And I will I might shift the tones up and down a little bit um, by mixing in some light earth or some grime and that sort of thing, just to give the, the panels a bit of a discoloration and just sort of some nice tonal variety. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to work right from this is in primer now, work right from the side of the bike using some flat, flat aluminium XF16 from Tamiya just as the base so I can uh, have it silver and then I can start the chipping process and then lay on the earth. So this will be now coated in the aluminium with the airbrush. Okay, so I've mixed up some flat aluminium FX16 Tamiya with some of Tamiya's own lacquer thinner. You can just use cheap uh, isopropanol uh, alcohol as well, but um, I had some of that Tamiya left over, so I thought I'd stick with that. I'm using a Badger Velocity airbrush and shooting about 15 to 20 psi, and I'm just going to cover this. Um, side of the speeder bike. So just an even coat of the aluminium. That's what I use on the FET helmets as well. So it's not a huge like shine. It's not like a Luma Luster where you have to have a glossy black. This is literally for chipping, so you'll like hardly see any of the silver. Once it's gone on. It's just to show through in the chipped area, so it doesn't matter if this is a little bit rough. It's a bit thick actually, I should have thinned it down a bit more hope I'm getting that in the camera so if I'm not Okay, oops, so there we have that in that aluminium. Bollocks. <laughs> okay, it's only for chipping anyway, so it doesn't need to be <coughs> like a po perfect polished metal sheen. So uh, let me turn the compressor off. Right, so after that, uh, I will go on to the chipping. Right, so um, regarding the chipping, um, usually I use a chipping fluid like the Vallejo Liquid Mask, Wilder um, chipping fluid and the Windsor Newton make their own. They're all essentially the same thing, they're liquid latex. <coughs> and I think you've seen on some of my other videos, I've used that uh, loads and it's my preferred way of chipping. You can dab on a ripped sponge and then just apply it in sporadic sort of movements and that looks like random chipping effects or you can use one of these rubber tipped um, sculpting uh, brushes that John uh, Bird put me onto. But uh, I will be doing it a little bit different today. Um, it's just out of interest really. I just want to see how the um, chipping fluid, and you can get this from Vallejo or AK Interactive or uh, I'm sure other brands do it as well. Um, it's essentially hairspray, hairspray in a bowl. And it's if you want to use um, the chipping fluid, um, if you want to search 
other videos, just type in hairspray chipping, um, and that's exactly what it is. You get your part of your model, um, get it in the base colour that you want. You will then probably need to clear coat it just to protect this from the scrubbing and stuff that you do to remove the hairspray which dissolves the paint. Uh, it won't work on enamels, it has to be acrylics only and Tamiya is, uh, I found the best so far for chipping and um, if you look on one of Michael Rinaldi's uh, videos or one of his books I think he said uh, a little handy uh, tip is to cut the paint with water. So sorry if I'm getting ahead of myself, but you basically you paint it with your base colour, you then clear coat it, you then uh, literally spray it with hairspray, a lacquer, like a, the, the cheapest shop brand hairspray you can get usually works the best. Um, or you use your chipping fluid through the airbrush, um, again mixed with water, you can cut that down and thin it. Um, once that's been left to dry, um, I actually prefer using the um, uh, hairspray out of a can because it mists on better. I find that the um, brand's chipping fluid clumps together in in, in in lumps it doesn't chip as well um, so once that hairspray or chipping fluid has sort of air dried you then put on your top color which will be in this case the earth and because it's water porn acrylics I'm hoping this will give good results again cut with water not thinners will give you a better chip effect because it's the um, hairspray or the fluid dissolving under the layer of paint which then chips away the paint um, it's not the way ILM did it at all uh, they use chipping fluid or dental drills or dremels and knives and hobby knives and sandpaper and all sorts to scratch their paint they did not use any form of chipping f uh, fluid like hairspray but because Guy has produced these awesome paints in acrylics um, I'm just interested to see how, how they react with chipping fluid. So uh, I thought what best to use than a really expensive model part to, <laughs> to uh, use as an experiment. But uh, I mean, if it doesn't work, you literally just top sand it back, prime it and go the traditional route. It's not going to destroy your model in any way, shape or form. They're acrylics and hairspray. It's not going to it's not going to dissolve anything or cause you any headaches. But uh, I thought I'd uh, share the journey with you and record it and see how it reacts and see how we get along. So now I'm just going to let that dry. It's sort of, it is touch dry, but I'm going to let that harden up and then give it a clear coat, just protect it. Okay, so I've cut the heavy chipping fluid. There's two different types. There's light chipping and heavy chipping, but they're just one's thicker and one's thinner. Um, cut that with um, tap water about 60 40 it is still quite thick but I've had to move over from a different airbrush to the uh, eye water from the velocity because it's not spraying properly um, and I'm gonna just try and give it a coat um, all over the uh, all over the part uh, you know, of the model what's weird is it will come out all splattery and stuff but it, when it evaporates and settles it kind of makes sense and it will just it will look rough before it looks good <laughs> so uh famous last words let's just see how we get along with this So that seems to be plenty on there now. And you can't really speed up the drying. You can't just get a hair dryer because it'll push around. I don't know if you can see, but um, it's all spotty. And 
I was, I was going to try and avoid that. But um, when you chip and start chipping away with the with the fresh water, um, those little clumps will come off as chips. So you can kind of almost see uh, what's going to be chipped ahead of uh, actually doing the process. But I'm going to let it dry and um, see how we get on. It's an experiment, you know, we'll just see how we get on. It, it looks, as I say, it looks quite rough now. And you can see all those bobbly um, sort of shapes where the where the hairspray has sort of clumped. But that that's OK. That will that'll settle down. That will... Um, that level out in time so give that 15 minutes or so just to calm down and level out and then I'll um, put the top coat on okay so it's just literally the last little bit I don't know if you can see underneath there just a little bit along there it's just starting to finish drying up and there's a little bit up the top there but it dries smooth so initially it looks quite drastic but um, once it dries it pretty much disappears now we're going to move on to the um, archive x 1975 earth and i'm going to cut that with 50 50 just with tap water so put a little bit in there i've got some tap water here Literally just 50 50. Maybe a bit more. Just so it, I never really measure mine out properly, just as long as it seems right and feels right. They say it's meant to be the consistency of milk. But then you've got semi skimmed and you've got full fat, and then you've got silver top. <laughs> <laughs> different thicknesses so here we go that's now cut with um, water and we're going to just put it through back onto the Badger Velocity hairbrush that's fine spraying and I don't want to put it on too thick I'm going to try and just do a light even coat so it'll have a better chance for it to be chipped later on seems odd not to use chipping fluid. I've used chipping fluid for so long and I haven't done this hairspray technique for years, like seven or eight years. So if I make a mistake, that's my excuse. There we go. Look how lovely that spray is, that Archive X acrylic waterborne paint. And I'm just gonna leave that for a sec. <clears throat> I should have had something better to hold it with underneath because I'm finding it difficult to handle it. Not that you'll see any of this inside, but might as well do it. paint now. I don't know if you can notice already, you can see some speckling. That's the hairspray underneath. Well, I don't think we want to go much more than that, really. Maybe a little bit more on top. Okay, 
leave that to dry but not for too long because I don't want it to be impossible to take off and then we'll use just normal tap water and an old brush and just work around the areas that you want to be chipped. Okay so now it's dry we're gonna go in with just normal tap water and some old brushes and attack that paint gently or hard or however <laughs> it starts to come off. Just use some old brushes I've got some different ones here and you liven up the paint with the brush to get it all wet and then you kind of just let that sort of soak in. Already you can see that starting to come off there. And then you just keep rubbing until it starts chipping off. And then you can also scratch in marks and then work those with the brush and they'll become more apparent. But you just repeat this over the whole piece that you're working on. I'm going to use this kitchen towel because that's a bit more abrasive. You can really start seeing the chipping now. It's quite subtle as well, it's quite nice. And because I've left this bit to soak, that's now more able to chip. But rather than me sit here and bore you chipping the whole thing, at least you get the idea of what this chipping hairspray fluid can do. It's just a slightly different way of producing your chips, really, and chip paint. <clears throat> I don't think I'll stop doing the mask off, but this is certainly satisfying to go around and create this effect. But uh, as I say, I won't bore you with every second of me going around it, but I'll come back when it's finished and show you then. Okay, so here we have a very heavily weathered <laughs> side of the speeder bike. And you can see that it was just literally wiping back over and over again. You're taking off that paint and then you can go over with the kitchen paper just ever so slightly. And it looks like I've gone to town and just sanded that back like mad, but I haven't. It literally light wipes with the um, kitchen paper. Now this spotting, <clears throat> I'd like to have seen less of that. That's due to the um, heavy chipping fluid being too thick in the airbrush and landing in, in, in droplets. So that's what's happened. Although it's quite a cool sort of effect, um, I'd have liked to have not seen that. But this was an experiment. And I'm happy with the outcome. I'll go over and re-weather this, add some washes and black and that sort of thing. And um, and just have fun with it. I mean, that's the underside of the speeder. So that's going to be prone to being smashed and hit and stuff. But I won't go as heavy on the other side. And I won't go as heavy on the rest of the bike. I'd, I mean, I'm, I'll probably go back to using the, the chipping fluid, the liquid mask stuff. Because I'm... I'm 
far more confident with that. Well, I, I just feel that it's um, a better effect. But what I'm really impressed with is the fact that um, Archive X acrylics can achieve this effect using that hairspray method. Um, it's just another um, weapon in your arsenal. It's just another technique, another thing you can use with these paints. And um, yeah, so uh, there we go. That's one side done. I'll go in with the airbrush in a minute. Oh, to seal this, you can either um, put a satin coat over or um, just leave it as it is. But you've got to be careful because obviously there's matte on top of um, shiny sort of, um, it's not gloss, but it's sort of a, this flat aluminium stuff has got some tone to it. And if you put a matte coat on that, you'll just kill that. So you want to, you don't have to seal it, but it's it's prone to sort of coming off more the more you handle it. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I'm going to do some... Um, streaking your stuff with the uh, engine black 1975 engine black from archive x got some here thin down you can't see it's all right move the light that's better um just before i uh hit record i just did some scratches with a blade that you just dragged it across just to act as like you know, some scratches as it's been speeding through the uh, forest of Endor. So now I'll just do some random packet, uh, random passes with the uh, engine black. Which I think I've thinned down too much, but that's a good thing in a way because you can sort of build it up as you go. So all around here, Dark look to it. Actually, what would be quite cool at this stage just literally thought, thought of this as I'm doing it is um, to if I can find it there's my chipping fluid add some chips to the um, to the blast streaks so that's in better days Christ might be using that one <laughs> bear with me this is an on the fly idea this has popped into my head so I use some of this Windsor and Newton chipping fluid using my sponge and just dab the sponge in there get that filthy and take the weight of it off on a bit of kitchen paper and then dab it on on the edges a lot like that and then give it a blow just to harden it up a little bit and get the, go over it with your dark shade and then quick blow in the hairdryer Rub it off with your fingers, hey, and you've got some smoky black chipping there. Looks quite stark now and rough, but as you go, you can feather that back in and darken it down. And you've got that cool bit of interest going on there. Okay, so I'm, I'm loosely using this uh, Japanese Chronicles um, book as reference. 
but I'm just having too much fun to really go mad on going extremely accurate. It, honestly, it's just, I'm not gonna bother with this one. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, it'll be in the right colors, but I'm, I'm gonna be having far too much fun streaking and just doing my own thing on it to keep it really accurate. So um, there's some streaks to go upwards in the book. And kind of like a, around this chip mark, I don't know if you can see that. There, around there there's like a circle. I wish I'd clean the airbrush out better because now I'm getting the Hemia flakes of paint coming out, but it doesn't matter. So there we go, we've got some crazy sort of blast marks going on there, just dragging it back. Had a few signature ILM blasts by holding the airbrush close and just lifting it off. So there we go, it's looking all right. And then we just work it around the edges where grime and stuff would build up. You can see that. Sorry, I want to get carried away and just I slide off camera. And some more paint. Whoops. My lighting is horrible. Sorry, it's, this is not the best example of showing you what I'm doing. There we go. I don't know how to overdo it just yet, but what fun this is. So much fun. Yeah, need to stop. <laughs> Can't help myself. I just hope that you can see it. Okay. It's quite nice how it changes. It looks dark for a second, then you move it and it gets light. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. So that was just a fun experiment using the hairspray technique and um, just a bit of airbrush work. I might go around with some oils and just stain it and add general wear and tear. But uh, yeah, happy with how that's looking so far. Okay, I couldn't help myself. I'm gonna go with some oils now. Um, I'm using um, oh, this Starship Filth, I think they're rust and light rust. Whether I'll use them or not, I don't know, but I'm going to concentrate on this top hit here. Um, so I'm using odorless turpenoid as the thinner. I've got the oil paint sitting on a bit of cardboard just to wick out the um, 
linseed oil inside, but to be honest, I didn't even give that time to do that. Um, I'm just gonna go around with this, this rust. I'm so sorry, you can't see, can you? Just dab it around these areas, then get a, another brush that's just solely got thinner on it. Dip that in the thinner, and then just move that rust around. I think this was on the island model, but as I said previously, I'm having too much fun to stick to the facts. Okay, and then I will just add a little bit in there. Get a thinner again and take most of that away. Let me get my darker colour. Put that in the hinges. And just generally dot it around. And get the brush. Thinner on it. And it's just a case of just staining it and just giving it a real world. Effect. It's not a wash as in like just flooding it on and taking it off again. But I'll repeat that all over the top here. And once that dries, that'll look pretty cool. Okay, that's how we're looking at the moment with those oils added. The top bit. <coughs> now, on the ref, there is some mud splattering underneath. This should be done at the end, but as a, you know, I'll probably get too carried away and actually doing it when the final part happens. So I will be doing it now, <laughs> all back to front, the way I usually do most of my stuff in life. But at least it gives you an idea of how it will look. Now I think they, according to what I can see, this is just just what I'm looking at here. That it looks like they've just used mud which would make sense because it's mud on the bottom of it. Um, I've got some Tamiya soil effect, which is basically just PVA glue with a bit of brown paint and some sand. Um, I'm gonna make up a mix of that in my pot here. And I'm gonna change the color of it with the Archive X mud. Going back to my armor roots. <coughs> mixing mud so I'll give that a shake this is the 1975 Archive X mud so I'll give that some mud and some of that Tamiya So it looks like crunchy mustard at the moment. <coughs> but we'll get an old brush. And just start working that on the underside. Don't go too crazy with it. 
because I mean I want to keep all that nice weathering on there anyway but what I can see on the ref it does look like there's mud on it or I can see there's an attempt to show mud whether they use the color mud or not I don't know And I could flick it off with a stiff brush, but I'm kind of in control here. And if that doesn't look like indoor soil, I don't know what does. <laughs> you walk crap. There we go. Well, it's something anyway. So there we have the right fender i suppose of the speeder bike looking pretty much done i could have another play with it but um i need to move on to the other bits now so thanks for watching guys as always sorry it's been a long one and a lot of drivel and a lot of it's been filmed on the fly but i've uh, i've enjoyed it and um hopefully there'll be another update soon cheers guys